Samora Michelle was born the son of a peasant farmer on September 29, 1933, in Gaza province of southern Mozambique. At the age of 31, he was one of 250 freedom fighters who launched an armed struggle against the Portuguese colonial regime. For more than 10 years, he commanded the revolutionary forces of Frelimo, the front for the liberation of Mozambique. With Frelimo's victory in 1975, he became his country's first president. On the night of October 19, 1986, Samora died, along with 33 of his delegation, when his presidential plane, returning from a summit in Zambia, crashed into a hillside in the eastern Transvaal region of South Africa. John Saul, professor of political science at York University in Toronto, was a personal friend of Samora Michel. He has lived and worked in Mozambique and taught at the Frelimo Party School in Maputo. So dramatic in, in, in his interaction with people. I don't think anyone who ever attended a meeting at which he was at or even a room in which he entered could help but feel that electricity that he carried with him. And it's hard not to sound cliched about it, but there it was. I mean, I've never myself been exposed to anyone who gave you that kind of electric shock when they, uh, of personality, when, 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 when they entered into a, into a situation. And so I think those who came in contact with him in any way had that feeling that they're, in some way their own horizons were, were expanded by the energy that he communicated uh, to them. But I think a lot of it had to do as well with his ability to learn uh, from, from the struggle and, be, and, and to develop positions that, that made sense and, and communicated messages that in Southern Africa were very important to communicate. When we last met with Samora Michel in Maputo in 1984, his country was suffering from a wide infiltration of Renamo bandits, the so-called Mozambican National Resistance. Seja claro. Seja claro. Vai diretamente ao problema. Liga. Be, be clear. Liga claramente. To your problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you what people, for instance, say about a country like Zimbabwe, that Zimbabwe has not transformed too quickly. But Mozambique transformed very quickly. That's why the enemy you know, has pounced on Mozambique the way it has done. Hoping to end the bloody struggle with Renamo and continue his country's development, Samora Michel had signed the Incomati Peace Accord with South Africa, in which the South Africans had promised to stop supporting Renamo. It now seems that the South Africans never intended to keep their promise. Colonialism is a crime against humanity. Colonialism is a crime against humanity. There is no humane colonialism. There is no democratic colonialism. There is no non-exploitive colonialism. In that area of Gaza where he grew up, uh, he had a living memory, in effect, of, of resistance to the Portuguese because Portuguese penetration in that area had been relatively late. But also, in even closer to his own birth and during the time of his youth, it was a period when the Portuguese were still taking land from his family and other families in the area. So he had that very strong sense of Portuguese despoilation uh, in, 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 his very, in his very youth. Uh, and subsequent to that, he trained, but with difficulty, because the Portuguese were not about to offer very much education to, to Africans in that, in that colonial setting. But he managed to train as a male nurse and came to work in, in hospitals in southern Mozambique and in Yak Island and ultimately in Maputo. And again, I think from that perspective, he got some strong sense of what it felt like to be uh, un the underdog within a society controlled by a white colonial uh, regime. Uns ficam sentem -se orgulhosos porque foram colonizados pelos ingleses. Os ingleses são civilizados, se constituem um grande império. There are some who feel a certain pride because they were colonized by the English. The English are civilized and had built a great empire.
e outros porque foram colonizados pelos franceses e pensam que intelectualmente são mais desenvolvidos, mais civilizados, mais evoluídos porque foram colonizados pelos franceses. There are others who think because they were colonized by the French, they are more intellectually developed, more civilized, more evolved because they were colonized by the French. Eu fui colonizado pelos portugueses. I was colonized by the Portuguese. País mais subdesenvolvido da Europa. The most backward country in Europe. <laughs> but still colonialist. That force, that drive, I think, which was which was most remarkable and which uh, carried him to the to the very center of, of nationalist politics. At a certain point, of course, as Ferlimo was taking shape, he he among others learned of this in Mozambique, and was amongst the first to to leave Mozambique, uh, to to join up with the new Ferlimo movement in 1962, and in a very early stage as well, got involved in the military side of the struggle and rose through the ranks militarily. Here they come. Here comes Ferlimo. Here comes Ferlimo. So many of them tall and strong. And look at the colonialists, impotent with their horns. You can see it in very clear ways that began to distinguish Mozambican nationalism from nationalisms elsewhere in Africa who hadn't had the necessity to come up against a colonial power of quite the Portuguese kind, one that was not giving in to the initial demands of nationalism but was digging in its heels and had to be struggled against in a much deeper and more fundamental way. Uh, and there were people in Ferlimo who weren't going to make that move. And in fact, there were struggles within Ferlimo between Samora Michel and his colleagues and others who wanted a much more conventional, easy passage towards independence that they had seen certain other African countries in the end uh, experience. But the Portuguese weren't going to give them that kind of an easy passage and therefore uh, all the more reason why Samora and his colleagues emerged to the fore. But they did it by asking critical questions. They asked critical questions about what was necessary to win uh, a struggle against the Portuguese, and that wasn't going to be done by mere militarism. It had to be done by deepening your links to a popular base. A luta the struggle continua. continues. A luta continua. A luta continua. Contra o quê? Against what? Against what must the struggle continue? Contra o tribalismo. Against tribalism. A luta continua. Samora so Michel's writings during the period of the struggle, they turn around questions of what would production look like that actually serviced the people? What would uh, gender relations look like that began to move towards equality? What kind of health and education services do we need in the liberated areas, but also subsequently in a, in a, in a truly liberated Mozambique that would service people's interests rather than the interests of a, of a, of a new kind of leadership that might merely be black skins uh, for white? Imais. And what else must we struggle Contra against? Ignorancia. Against ignorance. Contra o analfabetismo. Against illiteracy. Contra a exploração do homem pelo homem. Against exploitation. Contra superstição. Against superstition. Contra a miséria. Against misery. Contra fome. Against Contra hunger. Contra o pé descalço. Against lack of clothing. A luta continua. The struggle continues. Para que sejamos todos homens iguais. So that someday we will all be equal. In Maputo, Gaza, Inyamban, in Baira, Manika, Sofala, long live Frelimo in all of our land. Comrade President, when Frelimo looks back to the past, would you say the political leadership acted too quickly in transforming the country into a Marxist-Leninist state? 
This question is very interesting. It is Western, the Western point of view. They think that in Mozambique, we've had natural disasters and other things because we've moved ahead too quickly. Those who cannot read or write accept this theory. I'd like to answer that question, no. It was neither too soon nor too late. We acted at the opportune time with force and firm conviction we decided what our revolution would be. We took back the land soon after declaring independence. You think that was too quick? Taking back the land? It was held for 500 years in the hands of a few. 500 years. We took it back after 10 years of war. We were victorious and we said, we will now give the land back to the people. Was that too quick? We nationalized schools and hospitals that were serving a minority. They were instruments of privilege. Do you think that was too soon? The colonialists exploited us and stole our land. But now we are independent. We live by working with hand and hope. Ian Smith had made slaves of so many Zimbabweans. He killed so many patriots with the complicity of the West. When we took power in less than a year, in six months, we applied total sanctions against his government. Do you think we were adventurers? Do you think we were being irresponsible? Zimbabwe is there, a fact. Here our power is consolidated, indomitable, because it's defended by the people. The people don't defend abstractions. They defend concrete things. The land is a concrete thing. A dwelling, a school, a hospital is a concrete thing. The struggle, the enemy, is concrete too. For these reasons today, our people are standing up to the armed bandits and are certain of victory. We didn't nationalize industry. We didn't nationalize business. Industry and business were abandoned, and there were no Mozambicans capable of taking over. No one knew the legal channels, the patterns of commerce, the business of importing and exporting. Those who knew ran away precisely so our government would fail. Who is Renamo and why, why are they there? Why are there bandits so widely infiltrated into Mozambique? Well, if you look back at the very outset of, of Renamo, where it came from, it's, it's apparent that it was invented, in effect, by the uh, Rhodesians in the first instance, in, in the late 70s, when it was clear that Mozambique, an independent Mozambique, was going to be a, a, a place where ZANU, the liberation movement in, in, in Zimbabwe, Rhodesia as it then was, was going to be operating from. The a preemptive strike was seen to be the order of the day by people in the Central Intelligence Organization in, in Rhodesia. So what they did was recruit in conjunction with some Portuguese uh, financiers and the like who had had a large stake in Mozambique and were anxious to undermine Ferlimo's uh, project. Uh, what they did was recruit from the old Portuguese structures, the police and the commandos and the fleshes, uh, some of the most uh, horrific elements of, of Portuguese, including some Africans who had...